Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HBC. We're here at IC14 in Leipzig, Germany, and we're here at the Bull Computing Booth, and I'm here with Christian Kniep, and we're going to see uh, a little bit about something very intriguing for HPC. It's Docker, and uh, um, I'm very excited about this. So, so Christian, thanks for having us here today. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are we looking at? I, I understand you have some slides. You can kind of go through it and, uh, and then show us a demo maybe? Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So maybe I, I start, just start. The, I gave a talk yesterday, a, B, a Birth of the Feather session. And it was the long title was Understanding Your Data Center by Overlaying HPC Information Layers. It's a long one, so I shortened it a little bit. And uh, a little bit about me, I was... Ten years I'm now in IT and I iterated through all the level one, two and three uh, steps and I worked for automotive companies in the past and during this period I worked with InfiniBand. So two years ago I held a talk here at ISC about InfiniBand, how it's, what are the problems by uh, maintaining it and debugging it because there are no good tools to, to do so, so it was more complaining than dis describing. Uh, last year I gave a talk about supercomputing monitoring in general, so uh, go up some, some layers and try to describe what are the, the problems. And today I would like to show you my approach to com get, a, get a glimpse on the, glimpse on the complete cluster stack that we, we have. So uh, the complete cluster stack in my opinion, and it's a rough estimate depending on the environment and the customer I guess, is uh, that you have different layers and all these layers are um, viewed at by different angles from the different uh, people involved. So the user only cares about his end user application, right? The management guy looks only on the meta layer and the Excel layer that uh, wants to, he wants to export key performance indicators and he wants to report to his upper management. So he's not involved in the uh, production layers, I would say. And uh, the other layers or the other people involved, like the sysop guys, they look from the stack, from the bottom of the stack above, and um, then there are independent layers, like the management of the sysop, they are involved in, in all the layers. And as a system integrator, Bull is not only part of it, but for instance, uh, InfiniBand uh, vendors, they mostly look at their hardware stack, and I don't want to, to be <laughs> offensive, but... They provide tools that look at certain details at their layer, but it's hard to connect them uh, to other layers. So as a system operations guy, and I was uh, some years, uh, if you have a problem that you debug, um, you mostly look at one layer and it's hard to connect the other ones. So the goal for me was, and this is what I, what I try to do here, is uh, to connect all the layers and extract performance and log information so that I can overlay them. So I would like to get performance information from all the layers and log events and events in general from all the layers to provide useful information for the system administrator because currently that's not, not possible. So two years ago I made my bachelor thesis or three years ago, three years ago I made my bachelor thesis uh, from the need of a good InfiniBand tool. I was working at an automotive customer and why we supported a couple of thousand InfiniBand nodes and it was hard to debug when there was a problem, right? So, and there was no useful tool inside. Even if there is Mellanox UFM, it's for the administrator maybe in some cases not the good, not the best tool. So I created my own. It uses OpenSM and it uses a plugin mechanism that is provided by OpenSM and it exports to Postgres and um, RD tool or used to export to that so it scales to 50 nodes which was not very practical but it was a good approach <laughs> or a good start and uh, last year in December or so I, I coupled it with a new hotness so the graphite engine I don't know do you know graphite oh, sure. you know so yeah. it scales a little bit better and I use Logstash as an event mechanism or event um, engine so this scales to a couple of hundred nodes in the simulation and it's better. So this slide we see the traffic of the InfiniBand uh, nodes and these events are overlaid as uh, vertical lines which is useful if you don't have it before. So this is a good start. But this only uh, uses the lowest layer, right? So it's a start for one layer and for one particular part of the, of the lower layer but I would like to have it um, bigger. 
So I would like to have all layers and all stacks um, included in this. So I created Kneep Terminal, which is a, a, virtualiz a virtualized HPC stack, so all layers involved. I, I have a couple of containers, so I have uh, service containers, which, uh, which provide basic functionalities like an inventory with etcd, a DNS service, which based on the uh, etcd key value store. etcd is something you know as well? Yes, sure, sure. Perfect. And uh, an HA proxy to proxy the, um, the different uh, web servers from, from the outside that I do not have to know where it is, it's just a forwarding mechanism. On top of that, I have uh, Elasticsearch, Logsearch, and Kibana, so the default open source, for me, from my opinion, the default open source log and event engine, and uh, a graphite stack with different containers, so the blue boxes, I maybe uh, should have explained it, it's, it's a container, a Docker container, and the red uh, boxes are the services that are inside the container. So I have uh, the Carbon and the graphite web, container which are the default configuration or which is the default configuration of uh, the graphite engine and I provide some other um, visual visualizations for, for graphite information to compare them and to see if we have different angles with different benefits to the administrator. And on top of that I have um, compute nodes and uh, a workload manager so I use Slurm as a default open source uh, tool and we used it at Bull so it was a simple choice. And um, I have n compute nodes, so um, as much as the host can can gather can get. Yeah, and now I switch to the to the demonstration. Okay. So we're gonna see how this works all together. Yeah. Ah. So uh, just to show off how it started, it's just a simple bash function which uh, uses the Docker command to start some containers. So we see all the containers I just explained, the DNS and the ELK and so on. And afterwards I started uh, 15 um, more compute nodes, here is only one compute node. And by doing so, I, I can connect to the first compute node, which is compute zero, and with the command as info, which is a Slurm command to provide the list of hosts. I can see that I now have 60 nodes idling on my machine. And the machine is a laptop that it's it's back there. It has four cores, i5 and four gigabytes of RAM. And yeah, currently it's idling, it's only 60 nodes that are running. And this is a little bit small, so just to show you the Docker uh, process list or the Docker container list, it's just the 15 or 60, 20 nodes. Yeah. So let's start a job. I have a command prepared. It's Start, gem. And this is a matrix multiplication. The default size of the matrix multiplication is 60 rows, 16 columns. And instead of doing the real deals or doing the real computation, I sleep 50 milliseconds. So it submits the job and the, the 60 nodes are now allocated. And switching to the, to the graphite, to the um, performance metrics, we could see that uh, we updated a little bit. Oh, yeah. So I started it some time ago. So this is where my cluster was started. The starting process in the background, we see the um, CPU usage of the host system. And if I go to 15 minutes, let's say, we see that now the job starts. We have this 60 nodes. The uh, upper one is trans the um, transmitted uh, Ethernet traffic, and the lower one is uh, consumed, the received traffic. And we see that the job starts. The event job start is this dashed line here. So Slurm creates an event in Graphite, and we can overlay this event over the metrics. And this job should not be long, so it's, it's, uh, it's over already. So we have the 60 nodes doing this um, matrix multiplication and we have the green dashed line that says this job starts and the red dashed line that says this job ends. And um, for the lock management part, I use, as I said, Logstash, uh, Elasticsearch as a backend and Kibana as a front end. Kibana is uh, a nice tool to, to view um, 
in, uh, in the, the log information from from Elasticsearch, and we can see here all syslog events that are um, submitted through the nodes, through all compute nodes, and through all the service nodes, and uh, we can dive into the different um, the different steps that the nodes are, are doing. For instance, if a compute node comes up, he sends his IP address and a host name to the etcd server, so through the inventory, and from then on it can be resolved. It has a reverse lookup and it will be incorporated into the Slurm configuration and the Slurm daemons will restart, so it's available in the cluster. Yeah, so maybe I can start a second job that is a little bit longer. Uh, or maybe one job that will fail, maybe. I don't know, make a so, Okay, so now the job is starting. And the, the thing that I would like to empathize here is that this metrics information without the events, and this is only the simple event job starts, jobs ends, um, is not useless, but it's, it's not enough, I think. So we have to do something in HPC or in, in SysOps, I think, to, to make sure that we overlay this event events in, in metrics and the other way around. Yeah, yeah. so you're, by you know, relating this to time, you give that system administrator the tool to really get a feel for what's been happening. Yeah, exactly. And okay. if you only have this metrics and you do not know what happens, so this is, a, and, and this is very synthetic, right? We have compute nodes that do nothing except sending uh, or computing something together, but normally there are, there's traffic like a cron job that's syncing something, or so it's very much noise in there. And if you have noise that you can identify by overlaying the events that created that noise, it will be very beneficial to, to do so. Right? I see. Okay. And yeah, now this job is running. And you can even see here that this matrix multiplication has multiple iterations, and the iterations are visible. So it could be also uh, beneficial for the developers to see how this thing behaves. Yeah. 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 So should I switch back to the, the yeah. presentation? I have some, yeah. some okay. uh, more slides available. So future work. Um, what I think, what I, what I would like to do in the next couple of weeks, months, uh, let's see how, how much time I can afford. So it's mostly a pet project, I have to admit. I, I think it will be beneficial at my work as well. So I do performance and log management. So um, it will help, but for now it's uh, a pet project. So I would like to improve the workflow for the log events. So currently I'm just flooding in the, the log events and I do not pre-process them or I do not create metrics out of them. And this could be done to, to help make more sense out of them and what's also missing is a Nagios like node so uh, or Nagios or Chinga all the different alerting alarming um, services or systems that are available I would like to put them in there as well and compare them in different scenarios in the, in the same testbed a cluster file system like Luster or Gluster or um, BGFS to uh, have this central component in every HPC system sending events and logs as well and other nodes like LDAP, I think it would be, it would be nice to have additional dashboards for Logstash and for Graphite to compare them in different scenarios. And I would like to use InfiniBand for the communication traffic, so I tried this before I came here. And it's very interesting to see that uh, Docker and or LXC containers and InfiniBand is something that works pretty well, so you just have to map in Dev InfiniBand into the container and then you can use InfiniBand. Yeah. And I started an OpenSM in there, so this works. I tried to start an MPI run, but this doesn't work out of the box, so I have to do something more. But in, there, is sli there are slides in the internet available that, uh, that say that, that, that uh, there is not much overhead for InfiniBand inside the Docker container. So this could be something that we will see next year anyway. So we're computing within a Docker container. That would be heaven, I think. But yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about that because I've been getting questions, you know, does Docker have any role to play in HPC? And I knew about this work you were doing with the facilities and system monitoring, but what about at the workload level? Do you think there, there's there's things that could be possible? Yeah, as I said, I, I started the OpenSM, which is the first step, Yeah. and I started uh, an InfiniBand um, per, um, performance benchmark. This works as well. Um, and it's not much overhead, it's uh, 3 gigabit per second, or 3 gigabyte per second. 
and compared to the bare metal it was uh, quite the same so it's only a couple of percent overhead as far as I, I I'm concerned I, I yeah. played with it a couple of hours so it's not definite answer yeah. but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway and uh, with MPI I was able to start the job but he uh, it fails because of some U limit that I have to figure out so the memory mapping was not working I think that's something that's not uh, not far and not hard to do so I would like to, to try it out and then if we can imagine that we only have a bare metal docker server on the compute node and then we just uh, submit our image that is very stripped down user land very specific uh, libraries and would which could be even um, certified by Red Hat and by the ISV. <laughs> that would be nice, right? Yeah, so yeah. if the ISV could say this is my compute environment, yeah, I think that's something that we should look forward to in 2015 maybe, I don't know. Okay. Okay. But as I said, a couple of hours, uh, there is yeah. work to be done, but yeah. it's very promising, I think. Very promising. Well, yeah. yeah, I have some, some other thing I would like to to ask maybe if someone knows a good uh, inventory for for this kind of systems, I think there is not much out there which is um, which is which is good to use. Every everything is hierarchical as far as I know. You have rational databases, and I think what we need and this looks like this: you have this yeah. tree, and you can click on the tree, and then you have expanding the tree, and this. It's tiresome. Yeah, yeah and it, it doesn't scale <laughs> to a certain amount, right? Yes. If you if you want to have a metric from switch one, and then you have to know which port you have to yeah. click to connect it, it's, it's cumbersome. What would be nice is if we have a graph database. If we could have a graph mm. database, right, mm -hmm. where you can can connect uh, services to compute nodes, and you could overlay which uh, infrastructure is involved, and also which other services and which other infrastructure is involved. Then you could answer questions like give me all compute nodes connected to this Luster server and which routes include uh, InfiniBench Switch 2 for instance so that you can just filter this with this pseudo uh, query language yeah. and there are I think there are promising uh, graph databases as well but n there's no yeah I can see the why the, that would be very powerful for someone uh, administering a system to be able to answer questions and and put all that together. Yeah. 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 So, a little conclusion. Um, I run now on this little laptop. I, I could uh, start 15, 50 compute nodes uh, on a workhouse at work. I, I start a couple of hundred compute nodes. I have some issues with the, the underlying networking, but this, as I, as I said, I would like to use InfiniBand anyway. Yeah. And. Uh, since the LXC environment uses um, the normal Linux networking, it should be fairly easy to uh, cluster the Docker, uh, the Docker um, cluster with a couple of, of no uh, with a couple of nodes, and then we could spawn. Oh, that's my wish. We could spawn a couple of thousand containers, and we could really uh, create uh, uh, an HPC cluster and train and showcase. For, for others to, to see the cluster stack that we provide. And we can play around with it, we can swap out Nagios and swap in something else and have a, a good test bed for, for that um, to do. And as I wrote here, the tool chain could be automated, so you could test every piece very easily and you can have a functional test of everything. It could be automated as well. And showcasing for sure is something that would be interesting. And training, I think, is also a very uh, valid thing to do. So if a new system administrator come in and you say, work on this virtual cluster for two weeks, then he can kick <laughs> out some bucks. Before you turn them loose on the user community. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, Christian, this is, this is really exciting. This looks to me like uh, this is the future, and especially anything that can help the high-speed uh, InfiniBand and make it more manageable. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks.